over to Catherine now. Um, Sophie, I'd just like to, to congratulate you on, on the publication of another book. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Thank you so much, Christine. And it is lovely to meet you, Sophie. And it is one of the upsides of COVID. I suppose there have to be some that we are getting to see, to, to, to talk to people, albeit on Zoom, that we would never be able to normally. So look, I'm going to introduce um, Sophie, but I think I'm going to begin by saying that Sophie Laguna is a writer who makes her readers cry. Um, if you've read her books, you already know this. It's never out of sentimentality, but it's because of her portrayal of pain, of innocence lost, of love and of beauty. And it's extraordinary, pow extraordinarily powerful. And I can assure you that you're certainly going to cry at some point when you read Infinite Splendors, probably at many points. So it's, um, and not everybody can do that. So I think that's a real tribute to your writing. Now we know Sophie as um, the author of One Foot Wrong, The Eye of the Sheep, The Choke, and now Infinite Splendors. Mm -hmm. And we know you as the winner of the Miles Franklin and um, as a writer who's been shortlisted for many, many awards. In fact, I think every book is always shortlisted for awards. So we're just waiting for it to happen to Infinite Splendors as soon as that season starts. Um, but many people may not know that you're also a children's writer, also much awarded as a children's writer. So what made you move from writing for, for children to writing for adults? I hope I've got that order right. Well, you did, although um, it never felt to me like I, I moved really. Um, I still do both. I, the writing comes from the same place. I understand that this is a world where, where some books are suitable for children and others aren't, mm -hmm. and, and there are many people to take care of that. But, but I, as the artist, um, tell the stories I need to tell. Um, and I started to write the first book for adults, One Foot Wrong, um, all the way back in the year 2000, although, although it wasn't published till 2008. And so all at the same time that I was writing One Foot Wrong, I was also um, publishing books for children. So for me, there is no um, great wall <laughs> between the yeah, two. Great difference, yeah. It's, yeah. it's you, the artist, speaking in whatever That's voice it. area it's you wish to speak. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, that's how I'm comfortable. So I mentioned your books for children, partly because it seems children are so important in your writing, it, it, or for you, perhaps. So you write children's books, write adult fiction, but in the adult fiction, the, there are children at the centre. Um, there are always children at the centre. So Hester, mm -hmm. in One Foot Wrong, is sort of almost imprisoned by her parents. In The Eye of the Sheep, Jimmy is on the autism spectrum and is... is misunderstood severely by some people. Mm -hmm. Justine on the choke suffers absolutely literally for the sins of her father. Mm -hmm. And here we have Lawrence who is betrayed and has to spend his whole life living with the aftermath of that betrayal. Mm -hmm. So you seem to be drawn to writing about children and children who suffer, is that right? Well, I seem to be drawn to um, the way the experiences we have in child, at least in this novel, the, the way the experiences we have in childhood impact on us as adults. And um, for me, when you put that question to me, you know, I get a range of different responses because it's being put to me frequently, as you can imagine. Mm. And I never became an author with an overarching kind of a rationale, I will, I will write specifically for children it, you know yes it insists but for me as the artist if you like I don't ask myself why you're you're asking me why so I'm going to have to figure out an answer but you know but but the artist that I am who hardly has time to ask why just mm. does what's there mm. just does what wants to happen what happens absolutely naturally to me but when asked I now have to um, think well, well, what is it? And they're really difficult questions, aren't they? Because it's a mystery. Um, uh, I mean, how can I not be, if I have a complex adult character, mm. how can we not be interested in the adult character's early years? Mm. When we talk about writing for children, when we talk about the child's experiences, as if sometimes... Um, we're talking about children as if they're another species and then they become adults, mm. whereas they're just 
we're all human beings at the early years, the middle years, and the later years. And it just so happens that the things that happen to us in the early years are so deeply formative, impacting, profound for every single one of us. Mm. So, so really, I've started to think perhaps my answer to the question is, you know, why are children at the centre? Well, how do you not have them at the centre? How do you not have the early years at the centre of understanding adult drama? Because childhood is at the centre of all adult drama. Mm. I, I, know, I know I'm speaking passionately now, but mm. it's put to me so frequently. And I wonder why it's not, why, 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 perhaps the question is, why is it not done more? Yes, but uh, it's the suffering also that that uh, you seem to explore in all those books. Well, yes, but I mean, all all novels where people change, characters suffer. But yes, when children suffer, it's mm. particularly the stakes are higher, and yeah. it's 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 more deeply felt. And, and the consequences. You, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I write plenty of. I have written plenty of books. Um, that are read by a younger readership mm. where characters can't suffer in the same critical way um, or, or don't suffer in that mm. same way. When I have an adult readership, it enables me to just loosen up and go wherever the birds want to fly, if you like. Right. Uh, that might be a dreadful metaphor. I've, I've been signing books all day, so you'll have to excuse, <laughs> you'll have to excuse any no, flowery, you know. Um, so... So for me, you know, I'm not terrified of those places. Mm. I'm not, they don't make me uncomfortable to write about. They are in real life. I'm absolutely terrified by everything in real life. Sophie in real life is not that Sophie on the pages, if, if you know what I mean. They're, yeah. they're never the twain, what's that expression? You know, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. In, the, in the fiction, for me, it's not, it doesn't feel like, you know, when it's put to me, you know, oh, you write about children suffering. That's not what the artist, that's not how the artist operates or thinks. That's not, that's, that's you know, I, I can look at it from a distance after in hindsight and, and say, obviously that's oh, what happened. That's what I've done. But the, yeah. yeah, but the writer just sits, sits in cafe, car park, shopping mall and does what comes naturally. And um yeah, obviously, if, if there is suffering, then there are great knots that need to be undone. There is great yeah. energy. There is great energy that needs to be improved upon or we need hope or something needs to be understood where there is suffering. I mean, any any good, yeah, but, but you are, that, that is true. Yeah. But I mean, the other thing is, is words. Some of your, many of your children, child characters in, in the adult books, let's call them that, have have a difficult relationship with words. Justine is dyslexic, so she can't read, but she actually can't express herself very well because of her background, apart from anything else. And Lawrence develops a stammer. He does. Is that something that, I mean, is that something that you, you reflect on or is that something that, that happens? It happens. But it's interesting, you know, because it's contradictory. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's a contradictory thing that you speak about because at the very same time as they have a complex relationship with language and words, mm. they're very wordy, aren't they? Because the books are all written in the first person. That's right. Exploding with words. Yeah. And they're telling their story and expressing themselves. So both things are happening at the very same That's time. Amazing. And in fact, Lawrence, this latest character, is very wordy. And I love that about him. So he stutters and yet he's in love with words and, and uses wonderful words, many of them belonging to artists of the 1900s. Mm. Uh, you know, the French salons and the, uh, at the very same time as in his real domestic life, stutters to get a sing, you know, struggles to get a single word. A single word. sentence, a single so, word. So, you know, so if I have to apply my intellect to, to, to what I'm doing here, because I usually, you know, I usually wouldn't. I'd just sit down, I'd just be, I'd just play. That's what I'm doing. I'm just doing what wants to form. So now I have to, I, I have to think, well, what am I doing with language in these particular books? Um, I am drawn to characters who express themselves in highly idiosyncratic ways as a reader mm -hmm. and, and, and clearly as a writer. It's much more fun. It's much more fun to have eccentrics. I, I was thinking the other day, I, I write eccentrics. Mm. 
don't I, I was I, I I you know I only have to think about myself as a writer when I'm talking about the book because usually I just you just do it yeah I'm either you know being a busy overworked parent or I'm or I'm writing and so I don't have time to um well I wouldn't stop to ask why would I I just I just do it do it so so now but now looking at it um yeah I I do like characters that speak in eccentric make eccentric use of language and so mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's fun the extremes are great fun yeah. I know fun is not a a, a much used word probably um, amongst writers talking about serious fiction but I think it should I think it should be said more often because at its heart you know writing is, is a play is a play of words a play a story mm -hmm. a cast of characters yeah and uh, play is fun Play is fun, and I don't mean silly fun necessarily. Oh, I just mean serious, deep fun. Great fun, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a saying by Chopin that people who cannot laugh are not real people. Well, the French is are not serious people. People who can't laugh are not serious. Oh, people, which yeah. is, is a really good one. So yeah. let's get on to Infinite Splendors. Yeah. Um, can you draw an outline of, of the story? I will, I'm going to do my best. Yeah. Okay. So um, the story opens when Lawrence Lohman, the protagonist of Infinite Splendors, is a ten-year-old child living in um, a, a house on on forty acres of land at the foot of the Southern Grampian Mountains in a fictional town with his mother Louise and his brother Paul, younger brother Paul. They're very bonded. These three, mm -hmm. the brothers are close. They respect their mother. She's a committed and a devoted and hardworking parent. She mm -hmm. has a job. Um, she's a she's a she's a bright and caring woman, somewhat aloof. So there's a part of Louise, their mother, that the boys feel is held back from them. And there's a sadness in her because yes. she lost her husband. Yeah, and the and 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 Lawrence, with his intuition, senses that it's somewhere back in the past that this sadness comes from somewhere mm. way back in the past. Um, he has a, a lovely neighbour, Mrs. Barry. He has a terrific school. He's supported at school. He has an imaginative teacher. Um, and he's, a, he's sensitive and lively. And, and he discovers at 10 a uh, 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 gift for painting. With the and, help of one of his wonderful teachers. Yeah, wonderful. yeah he's, very, he's very bonded with his environment as well. They live um, at, the, at the foot of a particular mountain, Mount Wallace. And, and Lawrence sees this mountain as, as, as a kind of um, paternal figure, as a guardian, as a witness, um, as a boat, as a sail, all sorts of things. Mm. We'll Love talk about, more about Wallace yeah. later because it's Love really Wallace. important. It's Absolutely. A, it's a Wallace. I mean, it, yeah, it's not just, it's no. true to say that cat landscape is character, but Wallace is a character. Yeah, Wallace is a character. Yeah. Yeah. Wants to climb him, just loves him. Absolutely and then what, what him. happens then? And so, and so then um, a family uh, member comes who um, the boys have always heard about, almost mythologised, um, uh, and that is Lawrence's uncle comes into their lives uh, that they haven't met him before. And um, things change inevitably, as they do. I mean, if you're going to set up an I I idyllic sort of beginning, things are going to change. And they, 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 they change drastically um, for Lawrence. And, um, th and from that change, that fracture, is that the right word? Um, uh, we then see uh, the uncle leaves and Lawrence is forever changed. And then the rest of the two thirds of the book, we see how the uncle's visit um, impacts on Lawrence and the life he goes on to make for himself as a result. Mm -hmm. How did I do, Catherine? It's, it's very hard. Yep, that's uh, what your book's about. The, the yeah. most obvious question in the world. Well, you know, again, you're writing them, you're not thinking about what they're about, you're being. Exactly, being. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, the interesting thing about this book, I think, for me, compared to your other books, is that. Yeah. In the other books, your young characters remain young yeah. to some degree. Here, we actually follow Lawrence's life all yeah. the way through. Yeah. Uh, so that was that's really that's really interesting. So he's a ten-year-old, as you said. He's about he's a young man. Four. Yeah. And then he's in his fifties. Fifty, or, fifty-one, yeah. fifty-two. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, and you've got three parts in the book. Yeah. Each representing each with him at that particular stage in his life. Yeah. Now, I found that really interesting. So you actually have part one, part two, part three. There's yeah. a part divider page. Yeah. 
it would have worked without that because we would have quickly realized that Lawrence was now older. So why did you try to make, decide to make that structural break? I don't, I don't know, should I not have, I wonder? No, I think it's- Does it work? I think it works really well. Um, but I just wondered what it was. It was one of those intuitive things. It must have been because it just simply, it simply, it structured the thing in a very clear way for me. Um, and yes, there are three different chapters of, of, his, of his life, aren't they? Yeah. Three different, there is innocence, there is childhood, there is early adulthood, where Lawrence experiences for the first time the real impact yeah. of, of, of what yeah. has happened to him. And then he makes a critical decision and removes, removes himself from the world at large. Mm -hmm and 30 years pass and then things change significantly yeah, yeah. again in the third in the third part yeah. what i thought was also was fascinating in doing that is that so we we see lawrence from age 10 to age 50 something yeah and something's changed he he doesn't stammer at the beginning but he it, then that develops for the reasons we will dis we discover as we read the book but his if i could say his inner voice his 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 soul for the want of a better word, his soul voice remains the same all the way through. Mm. And that's done, I mean, his vocabulary changes and his stammer is there, but yeah. that, that, that inner person remains, that inner voice. And I thought that was incredibly skillfully wow. done. How, I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that you tell me that. It's good. Was that difficult? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I just felt him inside me if, if, if you like or me inside him and so it wasn't something I had to apply thought thinking to mm. or I just knew who he was I just knew who he was but do you, you think know, that you know who a character is uh you know when you lose him as well you you, you know you know I'm, a, I'm an actor originally I yeah. trained an actor so I think sometimes in those kinds of terms. Right. So when you are not in character, when you slip either side, intuitively, you That's know. Right. Yeah. You know. It's yeah. just, it, it's all intuition. It's all sense, sensory. Oh, that's not the right word either. Like a musician knows. Like yeah. a musician yeah. knows. Right. Yeah. Well. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So really, the analogy of the musician is really the best one for me because when, when I'm asked, you know, was it difficult? Well, I mean, composition's difficult in that it's challenging work, but not difficult because it's awkward or doesn't want to happen or, yeah, or, or, or thought, or, um, you know, that it doesn't want to flow forward. So that, that aspect of staying in him, I was in him from the start. From the start. It, I mean, it's something that I think, uh, I, well, I, I think that one is the same from early consciousness to, well, as far as I've been. Are, aren't we? It's astounding. But do you think, and do you think, if, so a part of every person, their awareness of themselves and of the world remains constant throughout their lives? Has it for you? Oh, that's such a good question. Are we the same? We're the same person. Yeah, but do you I remember, do you feel the same now as you did when you were 10, somewhere? Yes. I mean, I mean, aspects of all of us um, remain, it's very difficult to grow up. For, for everybody. I think it's our um, life's greatest, it's, it's, it's our great work, our great, you know, that's what we're here to do, I think, and it's really difficult. And, and um, it's some, it, you know, in any given day, there'll be hours in which we are not the adult selves that we have grown into. Would mm. you agree with that? Absolutely. But also- yeah, Especially just, around the wounds, there yeah. are, depending on the childhoods we survived or, or, or yeah, we're dragged back, perhaps. Yes, there are parts that it's difficult. Either either we stop at certain wounds along the way, certain aspects of ourselves where the pain is too difficult to face. We don't let go. We don't mm -hmm. look at it. We don't look at it. And if we don't look, if we don't look clearly, That's we right. never move beyond it. And we but remain. Get, what you do so well with Lawrence is painful things do happen, and he doesn't have, he can't really overcome them in some ways, but his, his inner self remains the same. That little boy who looked at nature and was yes. at the world and observed and, and was fully alive, never goes away. 
Yes, it, thank it goodness. Remains there. It remains there. But at the very same time, he, he um, in my view, he um, is, is, is very sophisticated and very adult in some ways. As a child. It, as, as, when, he grows, when he grows older, right. you know, even the aspects of him, his ability to speak and socialise and be intimate remain thwarted. Other parts, yeah. which is always the case, we compensate. So everything that can't move forward in that way moves so far forward in another way. And I think his paintings are sublime and very mature, very adult, very sophisticated, very layered, very complex. So and he speaks of them in a complex and layered way. Maybe that's his intuitive as your intuitive. I'd say so. Your writing is intuitive. Yeah. His painting is intuitive. I think so, yes, because Let's, he's not trained. Yeah. Let's hear that voice oh. all the way through the book. So we've talked about, um, I'm going to ask you to read from each part of the book. And the first one is on, the first um, chapter is, is about, is is when they're playing, he and Paul, his brother, are playing hide and seek. Mm. And Lo Lawrence is looking for somewhere to hide that he hasn't hidden in before, and he founds a fire bunker mm. and jumps into it. Mm. And maybe you could read that. I couldn't hear Paul out there. How much time was passing? I took a deep breath, and as I breathed out, felt myself sinking into the spaces between the grains of dirt. The two temperatures, cooler underneath and warmer above, met in the middle. Everything grew still. Was this what it was like for the animals that lived underground? And then he, he eventually gets out of the bunker. He's maybe a bit stuck in it, he gets out. And then that last, the last chapter, the paragraph of that chapter. Oh, the last paragraph of the chapter, yeah. of chapter one? Yeah, for the rest of the day. Ah, gives me, I leapt right ahead. For the rest of the day, I didn't think of the bunker at all. It was like every other Saturday, while Paul and I played in the yard or helped Mrs. Barry or fought or scored or raced the bikes. We were waiting to hear the sound of the Austin in the drive for it to be mother come home. But in bed that night, when Paul was asleep on the other side of the wall and mother was doing the last tidy, I closed my eyes and felt the earth around me. There was no time. All the activity was above me. I was no longer an object in the world and did not live or die. In that second behind the breath, I didn't belong to anywhere or to anyone. So he's, yeah, at this point, who is he at this point when he's still young and undamaged, I suppose? I think, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's complete. I mean, I think we're all damaged the minute we're born, really. But I, um, I think what I'm, I'm showing here is already a very sophisticated ability to separate himself from his thoughts, the way we do when we meditate. He is already able, he's so gifted, he's already able to understand that, that he is not his thoughts and that yeah. he might be another eternal self. I think that's how, that's what the bunker gives him. He, gives it, he gets a taste of this is complete and total escape from self or at least escape is the wrong word um stepping away from self and it's completely sheltered it, it, it's completely safe at this point yeah. at, at this point in that in, in that in that experience yeah. In, yeah. In, in, under the earth in that way yes so let's talk now look at page 183 mm -hmm. when the the the, the, the tragedy the damage ex damaging experience has mm -hmm. happened and he's now completely different. Mm -hmm. He's um, he's got through school. He's but he's not the boy he was. He's now a young man, yes. and his mother encourages him to get a job because yes. he has to do something. Yes, at the dairy, first day at work, mm -hmm. and she sends him out um, at four thirty in the morning, doesn't she? When it's still dark, so that he's there in time for the first meal. The bus, yeah. Um, you better get out there. Bill Granger is never late. You don't want to keep him waiting, she said. <laughs> Go on. Good luck, Lawrence. Go on. Not once had she let me finish. I left the house, the night air cold in my lungs, cold under my coat around my ears, cold in my boots. These were the first days of winter, each one colder than the next. I looked to the outline of Wallace, 
standing at the front, brave enough to face the dangers, loved by his brothers, abrupt and piccaninny. Wallace, I lifted my face to the last stars. In darkness, the landscape rested, withdrew, concealed by the absence of light. How would it ever be possible to paint the night? It was only possible in contrast. Mm. So here he's, the voice is the same, isn't it? He's, he's that reflective, yeah. looking at his experience, looking at himself from the yeah. outside almost, but he's already become a painter. He has, he has. I love his thoughts. I love his thoughts, the way he ruminates and romanticizes or at least sees the soul of the thing. It was so enjoyable. It was so beautiful to allow myself um, to, to, to express myself in that way. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Wait, was he always going to be a painter? Yes. He couldn't have been a writer. I passed my memory back. I think so, because I had a collection of letters between great artists and um, I wanted to use it. Mm. I wanted to use it. That's not the only reason, but, mm. but maybe I, I remember, I remember that he was going to be a painter. Mm. Yes. And let's listen to let's listen to his voice again towards the end of the book um, on page three nine eight. Hmm. And the mountain. Oh yes. Is, he's going into the mountain, and it's the most lyrically beautiful passage hmm. about not bonding with nature, which is such a trite way of putting it. But but anyway, read it because yeah. you said it better. Yeah, he, he's 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 had a bit of a tricky time up to this point when he goes up the mountain and gives himself a rest from the stress that he's under. As I climbed the mountain, the world in its summer glory rushed to meet me. Blue-headed lorikeets and blue-winged wrens and rosellas flew in and out of the papery branches of the stringy barks. Heath and white gum and spider lilies bloomed between the trees. I heard the buzz of the flower wasps and the dragonflies and blowflies and the crickets, a music made of the wings of insects, the snap of dry bulga, warm mountain air in the leaves. Wallace had always been here, either looking over me or beneath my feet as I climbed his pathways. I felt the sweat in my socks down my back under my hat as I took my long steps up the mountain, my bold steps, my long legs. Did any man have legs as long as mine? There was nothing more that I needed. I had one thought after another with enough space to join them and enough to keep them separate. There was no stammer in any part. I would not see the boy again. Did not want to. I wondered, when was I last free? Yes, so that again, the voice is the same person, but mm. other things have been happening. Mm. So it's really from the time that his mother dies, which is when he's a young man, mm. to... And, and earlier, but certainly from that point, there are three things that matter for him, really. And I don't mean people, I mean things. So there's, there's the mountains, there's the Grampians, and there's Wallace in particular. Mm. What you refer to Wallace, or he refers to Wallace, as he. Mm, he does, yeah. Do you think of mountains as male generally, or was that? No, no, it's just if I sit down at the page and, and, and that arrives if you like and it feels like the right note then I'll then I'll stay with it and build on it mm. so if I say if I decide that as a he he's a he well that lends itself to being a, a father figure paternal fraternal it works for the story you know and I'll know if it doesn't work uh, um but no gosh no I mean no I don't think of mountains as male and so Wallace is all those things to him, gives him that. Yeah. Those things that have been, that he doesn't have, he, he never had. He doesn't he? He says loved by his brothers. Yeah. Abrupt and Piccaninny and, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other constant in his life is, is his house, Beverly. He loves Beverly, yeah. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Yeah, it's so yeah. fun yeah. having yeah. him doing that, yeah. Great fun to have him, the house named Beverly. Such, a, such an endearing name. A humble a female name. A female name, yes. Beverly's female. And again, you know, it just happened on the page that way. And I, I like, like is the wrong word too, but feels right. Whatever is a better way to put it works for me creatively. And so I, I stay with Bella, uh, Beverly. And then 
you know, I might make a very loose decision, ex an experiment, if you like. That's not the right word either. But, you know, that, that, that Beverly is, it, it, he calls the house Beverly and sees Beverly as female. And I, oh, that feels good. That feels right. So then I'll develop it and it will become clearer th throughout the novel or I will make more of it. And there will be other threads that I might play with in the early stages that I pull back on because they don't they're not the right note they overcomplicate or a writer or in these stories i have to decide what are the metaphors what are the preoccupations limit them you know you can't have too many you have to stop you have to decide what are the parameters what are his um yeah what what are his obsessions and what are his inspirations and and i want to make much of them whether it's robinson crusoe the book of letters wallace there's a great deal the cattle you know gert yeah. Um, Gert yeah. plays a part too. I have not had the opportunity to speak about Gert. Gert and Mrs. Barry both play a part. Yeah. I was going to talk about the, 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 the not just human, but the yeah. creatures who matter to yeah. him in a minute. But then the third thing is painting. So painting. he's introduced to painting by Mrs. What's her name? The primary. Mrs. Sinclair. Yeah. Mrs. Sinclair in the fifth class. Who's a wonderful woman who real yeah. and she realizes very rapidly. And she supports him and she buys him a fantastic tin of good quality drawing pencils and paper. And she says, just take it everywhere with you. It'll fit nicely into your sketchbook, into, into your, um, your satchel. Yeah. And you, you don't need to make a mess or a fuss. I know your mother needs you to do your homework. She sees all that. She sees his potential and, uh, and she takes care of it. She, she then, encourages it. And, and his uncle does that as well. He does. Beautifully. I mean, yeah. he, in those early weeks, introduces and brings into the house the world outside of Hulon, which is a great, big, exciting, colourful, dynamic, dangerous, wild world. Mm. And he, he brings it straight in through the front door. Uh, and uh, he knows, he knows exactly how much power I think he's wielding. I mean, he knows, he knows how impressive he is in those early weeks. He and knows. He, and, and that remains, and he gives something to, to, to Lawrence that, that remains with Lawrence for the rest of his life. I mean, exactly. that's a double-edged. Yeah, the, um, the, he, gives him, he gives him all sorts of words and ways of understanding art. He, he, um, he he gives Lawrence the opportunity to that's the wrong way to put it he lets Lawrence know that painting matters and that there are people all over the world of huge importance who do it and it's really a wonderful important vital part of being human and Louise his mother isn't able to do that it's an incredible thing that he does he affirms him and you 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 make that you make his his intrinsic ability really clear when the uncle says yeah. the perspective of this yeah. toy works well. He goes, What's perspective? Yeah. Because he's doing it. Yeah. He hasn't been taught what perspective yeah. is. It's yeah. and he explains. Yeah. Yeah. We can we can read your your picture is completely accessible to us because we don't have to spend any time trying to work out where the fence is in relation to the sheep. You've done all the work and and the and the and the what do you call it? The viewer can simply absorb the richness. Mm. Is, is visual art something important to you? I mean, it, it is, it, it is, but it's much more important to Lawrence. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not my, um, I've grown up with artists. There are family members who are artists. I'm married to an artist, um, but uh, uh, it's not my main, you know, the most important thing in my day. But if right I, about it. Life, I would be surrounded by beautiful paintings and visiting galleries and I'd have a coffee table with beautiful art books and it would all be different <laughs> to, to, you know, chaos and five-year-olds and, you know. You write yeah. about it as somebody who, who has an understanding and an interest. I did grow up with it. I did grow up with it. I do know about it and I do live with it now. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I probably... If I worked hard enough, could write maybe I could write about being a musician. Maybe that would be hard. Maybe, but uh, surely there are parallels between uh, writing and painting. 
visual mm. art and painting. I mean, I understand the call of it and the satisfaction of it and a, a lot about the process of it, the immersion in it. Mm. Um, I, I do respond very much to colour. I am strongly um, aesthetic. Yeah, that's very, I have, a, I have a strong aesthetic and what I look at matters to me all the time. Mm. Mm, that's, and that's very that's very clear yeah yeah in, in the yes, book yeah um, so there are a few people and, and and creatures i suppose who are really important in lawrence's life yeah. um his brother to begin with but that his brother remains a presence but but their relationship yeah. is never the same again there's his mother yeah louise there's the next door neighbor mrs barry yeah She's a wonderful character. Yeah, she's very grown. dry and very dry. I know. She's got no time for men anymore, does she? But no, she kind of goes, yeah, well, except for except for Lawrence. Except for Lawrence. Yeah. And the scarecrow. The straw yeah. man. The straw man's a character in the story too, isn't he? That's true, yes. And he car man. carries through. All the way through. The straw man and Madame Butterfly. And Madame Butterfly, yeah. And then all of those different artists, Constable, Turner... Um, Millet, Corbet, Angler, I mean, gee. Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Yeah. Van Gogh. yeah. yeah. I, still, I gave him a bit of space, though. I didn't want to um, go there too much because he's been so popularised, I suppose. Mm. And I knew the shadow of Van Gogh would be always there in the story because of the, his relationship with his brother and the letters and right. his death and um, how much we all know about him. So I didn't need, even need, you know, I provided the quote from him at the beginning. Hmm. I referred once in the story to him. You remember the neighbour, Tanya? That's right. We, yeah, it says Van Gogh is easy. Yeah, so don't you think I know anything? Yeah. Uh, but also uh, that when you talk about the night, that made me think of Van Gogh's Starry Night. Ah, oh, I looked at a lot of paintings of the night. Yes, yeah. he begins to paint the night because neighbours come and he hides away from them during the day and he can only get out of the house at night and then he That's learns. Right. So he has, he has a... trying to remember exactly what the quote by Van Gogh is at the beginning. Do you want the to quote, just... The, the, uh, the quote at the beginning, hmm. um, which is, which I love, obviously, the lamps are burning and the starry sky is over it all. Hmm. I wanted to keep it very simple. There were many, many lines I could have used. Um, which were much more, um, um, he, he described his, his suffering and his angst as a painter and um, his struggle, but I thought something very simple did all the work, did yeah. all the work it needed to do. Just, a, just a, you know, Carries us through, carries his, his presence through. Yeah. And as you say, Robinson Crusoe is the other. Robinson Crusoe, yes. How does he come in? Well, um, his fifth grade, a fifth class teacher begins it's their classroom text and she reads every afternoon and and the class sit cross-legged at her feet and nobody speaks and she reads with great drama and commitment and and she she weeps openly and the children learn this story with her and 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 Lawrence absolutely loves it as he would I'm sure any other wonderful book at that point in his life you know he's wide open to story and mm. I and and um responsive so she picks this wonderful book and he just he just loves the character and and, and, and he remains with him he mentioned he every him. Then. well he, ha he hasn't been you know that book came along at a critical time when he is like a sponge and that mm. closes down so that remains that remains all the way through you know um and I suppose because there aren't a whole lot of other books that he reads, this one gains increasing significance uh, all the way through. Yeah. And Christo becomes a, a person to him in a way. He does, a symbol too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he calls to him and he questions the universe and he philosophizes in ways that continue to speak to Lawrence all the way through. Hmm. And um, yeah. It, yeah. Tell us a bit about the relationship between Paul and Lawrence, Paul, the younger brother. They're really close. They're, they're, they're really, um, there's a little bit of competition, but it's pre-tempered. 
Um, Lawrence, you know, he 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 gets this fantastic school reports, and Paul mm. says he's only good at sport. But Lawrence never, uh, what's the word? You know, he never plays on that. Um, no, there's real love. There, 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 there's 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 love, absolute love. They wrestle. They look at. They climb up onto the iron roof of the shed and feel the warmth of the uh, you know the corrugated iron beneath them and watch the sunset and talk about scientific stuff like how long will the sun last and what's going to happen and they're just they're peaceful together and they're naughty together and they speak every night through a crack in the wall they each have a poster that obscures and then that that changes that changes and Paul every single night because Lawrence is older he waits for the um he's waits for his brother to fall asleep and it's not until Paul is asleep that he feels he can allow himself to drift. And invariably, um, he will picture the mountain and, it, and it's the mountain. He drifts over the pictures of the day and there is the mountain through his window and he falls asleep beneath it peacefully. Mm. And they climb together and they take risks together and um, it's a physical, ordinary, uh, active kind of a relationship. Yeah. What makes it all the sadder when that is broken? Well, I suppose I'm showing the way when when boundaries are transgressed, how divisive that can be, mm. how divisive that can be, how um, it can make it impossible um, for us to uh, stay bonded in the same way. I'm showing I'm showing the impact. Mm, that's right and that it's an, that's probably the first relationship in which we can we can yeah. see it yeah and that's what happens I, I think that's how it happens because Lawrence protects Paul Lawrence is protective of Paul and Lawrence says he would rather it happen to him than to Paul because that would be unbearable maybe he wouldn't survive that emotionally at all um and so Lawrence pays the price and Lawrence must carry it into adult. He does, yeah. And there really aren't alternatives. And many people, you know, and we all know this, that many people who suffer, as he does, don't go on into their 50s to paint houses full of breathtakingly beautiful canvases. Mm. I think it's worth, it's worth saying that, you know, because we, we are looking at the damage done but yet, but yet he spends the next, the next 40 years of his life and particularly the last 30, you know, once he discovers painting, investigating light in every, in all of its um, dimensions, if, that, if that's the right way to put it. He learns about light for the rest of his life. That's mm. pretty powerful. Not, not everyone gets to do that. He experiences transcendent ecstasy. And there are many people who don't open themselves up to that either. Who, who, who suffer the way he suffered, and it's 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 drugs and alcohol, or or it's death, frankly. And it's not, you know, Lawrence. I understand, I understand his life. You know, he's he's not ninety eight, but still, life is long. Life is long, and life is rich. I think I want to show that there are many ways to live a life. There are many ways to live a life, and we don't all get to have. Well, none of us get to it. No, no, it's not perfect for any of us. And, and many people never get to know deepest intimacy. Many, many grown ups don't know it. I've never experienced it. Or, or just don't. It's just, it's just a difficult thing. Really satisfying, intimate, long term, connected relationship. We all know how hard it is. Mm. And Lawrence has other um, intimacies and riches that people, many, many will never know how close he comes on earth in the physical earth to um something transcendent yeah. and maybe he would never reach that place if he got married and did things, and did things. And bit, maybe we don't know that but maybe paul doesn't, paul, doesn't, paul doesn't reach that place necessarily we don't know we just don't know but, but we, we do know say, that lawrence does but he does and he paints it so it's not just that he um goes into an imaginary sort of a, um, you know, e ecstatic state, he paints it. And that takes great dedication. That, that's very hard work and he's completely dedicated to it. So I would argue that a part of him does know what he's doing is work. 
it might be unconscious, but a part of him does know that this is the art of painting. It has come before and it will come in the future and he's contributing to it. There is somewhere where he says something like, yeah, he does. He earns money to send yeah. money to the city and he gets his paints from the city and that, yeah. that's what- That's, that's how the world about. goes around. So yeah. he understands he has a place. I mean, many people never get the satisfaction of, of, of that. Mm. Never know it, many. He's, and he's, he belongs very deeply to, to, where he, to, to where he's rooted, he has roots. And many don't know that either. And he has this, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm putting words to this because it's, it seems it's easy to look at what hasn't worked. And I really want to be mindful of, of what he has had. Of, of what he has had, because I think I believe that what what we lack in certain ways will compensate, will make up for. If we if if we can, and he's if we can fortunate in one. I mean, he's not fortunate, but but he does have find something and have something. And as you said earlier, it's not drink and it's not drugs and it's not death. It's it's life, really. It's, it really is life. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he ends up making a huge contribution, a huge absolutely. contribution. Yeah. And, and that becomes clearer at the end. Yeah. I'm just quickly going to say to people, do start sending in your questions because we've got about 10 minutes. I've got hundreds more, but do send them through and um, I'll start to ask them. The one question I do want to ask you is, there's a lot of darkness in this book. Yeah. You know, bad things happen, really bad things happen, and more than one bad thing happens. Do you believe in 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 badness, in dark, in evil as a force, or do you believe? What mean more than one bad thing happens? Well, uh, I'm thinking that a bad, terrible things happen. A terrible thing happens to, to uh, Lawrence early early in the book. Yeah, but then there are other bad things. I'm thinking when the neighbors come to. St um, well, well, he's drawn, isn't he? To to um, he, he's compelled. Yeah, to, to to recreate as as one does to but, recreate something. But I think of the girl next door, for example, who is cruel, is the only way to put it. Well, I I have I have different I have a different response to her. Really? Yeah, I do, I do. I understand she's taunting, but she's fifteen, mm. and she protects her brother. And that's a beautiful thing to do. And she does, she does. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I can oh, see what you say. Yeah. She absolutely does. The fact yeah. that- so Can you, but you know, she does have a, she, de she does, you know, her own dad seems to be out of the picture. She's had to move schools. She's 15. I mean, I, I don't know how terrible she is. She protects him. Hmm. So she saves Lawrence also. There's yeah. always another way to look. In another way, yeah. I mean, I, no, I mean, many people. Of course, I, I can see she's being bitchy yeah. and, and, and those things. I can see that, yeah. Um, do you think that do, but do you think that there is such a thing as, as evil or do you think there is... No, I don't there think, is, I do think that. Doing bad. Yeah. I, I don't really have um, strong... I don't, I don't really have strong positions... Uh, me as Sophie Laguna, the ordinary person, not the writer, um, uh, I, I, I am more in the camp that, uh, that w w w human beings are capable of heinous um, acts and, and terrible destructive mm. behaviour rather, um, rather than suddenly magically transforming into monsters that we could never be. No, I, I, I think I am more... Yeah, that it is human, and um, it's better to know it mm. and understand it, and and be honest enough um, with our own selves to own own our own darknesses rather than blame it. Is yeah, it yeah, yeah. There's some you. evil other mm. that that mystically arrives and mystically goes. Yeah. But having said that, but uh, having said that, I I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and, and that we are we are actually capable of um, you know people with with power do terrible terrible things. Mm. But, but, but it's also I, handed down, isn't it? There's inter intergenerational damage or trauma. 
there is, yes, it's handed down. And, and, um, and there is also um, war in the story. You know, I'm looking at mm. violence between countries or ho however one puts it, war. Mm. And that some of this is, some of this is, um, a, what do you call it, a byproduct of war because the boys lose their father. So they don't have, they have Wallace and the uncle comes, but where is dad? And dad, yeah. Lawrence feels, and it could be a fantasy that if father was there, things would be different. I'd say yeah. they would be. Well, that's the story that I'm telling in this book. Yeah. That they so someone, would... has asked, sorry, someone has asked a question that I was going to ask, which is about the title. The, the title yeah. comes from a letter that the um, French painter, the French Impressionist painter Jean Millet wrote to his friend. Um, and what did he write? 220, by the way. <laughs> Actually, what's that? Page 220. Ah, ah. Um, oh, oh, you mean the, the quote from the letter 220, because I was going to look at the actual letter. Yes, oh, okay. Jean, Jean uh, Millet, who wrote some, many people when they see the countryside, see nothing but something like nothing but um charms oh. but i see infinite splendors and i just um love those two words put together and um really the fact that uh well lawrence understands the infinite or or the idea of the infinite appeals to him and to me and um infinite means ongoing doesn't it forever forever and beauty there is the beauty as well yeah. yeah and it's so grand and it's so um there, there, it's a, it's a, it's a it, would you call it a flowery kind of, it's lofty, I suppose. Mm. Um, and it's beautiful. And Lawrence so. loves all of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody's asked a question, going back to what we said earlier about children's books and adult and books for adults. I mean, you're clear, what, are you clear who you're writing for? Well, I'm not writing for. I'm writing. I'm writing. Who, who for. your readers might be. Yes, of course I will. If if well, you know, if I know some of the content early on, or I know the the obstacles my characters face, yeah, it's not hard to work out that that's not going to be um, appropriate. And so, um, as soon as I know who my character is, I'll know um, whether it will be yeah suitable for adults or children. It's not hard to work out. Yeah. yeah, and and so you know the, the choke, for example, wouldn't be read. I mean, I wouldn't have thought it would be read by a child. No, no, it never crossed my mind that it would be read by a child, or, right. or any of these any of these books. Um, yeah, no, not at all. Was there a specific sort of prompt or an event that led that led you to Infinite Splendors? Um, I read Cormac McCarthy's Child of God, and I which is which is a very it's very literary and and poetic but very dark much darker i think than my work although um cormac doesn't have his readers bond with the character in the same way that mm -hmm. i do so lawrence I, I suppose i don't know would we call lawrence an anti-hero he's not an anti-hero he was no. to me he's not an anti-hero but and something about cormac mm -hmm. mccarthy's book um sparked some idea about um, permission, permission to write in older male voices. Um, uh, so that that was a spark. Um, but but I, I think we can have sparks, but there has to be kindling. There has to be plenty of kindling and, and plenty oh, of fuel, fuel just beneath the kindling yeah. if, if a book is going to get written. So for me, the spark, there are sparks and they're they're really irrelevant many things could spark it at some point it will want to it will insist i'd say I'd and do say. you take did, did this book take a long time to write are you do you write fast i write fast yeah i write how fast. long would this have taken I, to write? This um, is well i began at the end of 17 and um and i wrote i wrote it over about um a year and a half and then back and forth and back and forth and 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 writing other books in between and um yeah what are you writing now another adult book or a... um i i can't talk about it oh, okay because um when things are sort of too embryonic it's like declaring to the world 
one is pregnant when when you know it's not, you remember you know how the 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 yeah. obstetrician always says wait 16 weeks or something but i do have children's novels coming and right. children's picture books coming oh well, that's they're fully awesome. done yeah like so i can i can mention them because it doesn't sort of jinx anything mm. and you said something earlier and i'm trying to remember exactly what it was well i asked you a question you said oh i don't know why that happened oh, i don't know why he did that that's an interesting way of looking at it which suggests that you discover your characters all the you you write them they write themselves but you have not yeah. they have their own lives i think so and um and their actions and their responses are um complex complex mm. so i can still be thinking about them and wondering about the moments and wondering what it felt like you know wondering what a certain choice felt like and yeah musing musing upon them and we were talking about a, a particular conversation between paul and lawrence yeah and i and you said i don't know what whether yeah. paul would have understood something. no i still think about it i still think about it yeah well, that's a wonderful that's what you give your readers i think a depth and a and a complexity and a, and a you know so we all keep thinking and keep wondering so that we've got about 30 seconds left and I, I, what I'd like to what I want to say is oh, we did have another read uh question mm -hmm. that seems to have got rid of it somebody saying I love your books but they make me cry so I well, just I that, don't that's right you asked me I don't set out to make anyone cry I just you just do it I'm just true to the, the characters I just do the job that 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 is asking I just devote myself to the job of the characters telling their story from right, you know, getting the full picture of their story. And that's 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 all I do. That's well, all I do. Yeah, it's it's kind of a big all. And I think <laughs> yeah. that, that we're we just have to be very grateful that that is all you do. I uh, look, time has run out. So I'd like to say thank you so much, Sophie, and to really recommend that everybody who's listening and everybody, other people, just go out and read the book and, and give it time. Don't try and devour it. It's a book that I think can be savoured and, and every word and every sentence and every paragraph really needs to be read with love and with attention. And that's a, a wonderful thing to have given us. So thank it's you very, very much. And you've been absolutely wonderful to speak with. I've really- I've got that, lots more questions. Thank you for your uh, question. have to stop. Thank so you. Danielle is back to tell us that, I think. Oh, uh, Christine, hi. Hi, Christine. <laughs> That's all right. Daniela is my colleague at, um, at Wallara. Uh, hi, it was, oh my gosh, um, I'm, I haven't had a moment to read it yet, but I will be reading this book. As you will. I will, definitely. And I think I might have the box of tissues. I, I was almost in tears just listening to some of them. I, I was myself. Words, so. I was myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine, for facilitating our event. We, um, as I said, I, I would, I wouldn't have done it justice. So I'm, I'm so um, pleased that you were able to do this for us. Great honor. Congratulations again, Sophie. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, thank you to all our attendees.